Yo, what's up everybody? Brian with you from the game coming. And today we're taking a look at the Victor Open Dev here in Humankind. So Humankind is the newest challenger to the Civ series in the 4X genre. The game itself doesn't come out till this August, but this is just like a single scenario for you to kind of complete and look at and kind of give them some suggestions and stuff along those lines. So like Civilization, you take control of a nation and kind of build it up through the eras. This game plays out a lot different and I have to say I've been playing it for a little bit for the last couple days and I've been having a lot of fun with it so this game's a little more culture centric than something like Civ so instead of taking like a single empire like the Nubians or like the Aztecs and building them from the ancient era all the way to the modern era every time you get to a new era you have an opportunity to pick a different culture and they have something like 10 cultures per era or something ridiculous like that so ultimately you could start the game off well you start the game off in the Neolithic thick era so you don't actually have a culture but then in the ancient area you get to pick a culture and you could be like I'm trying to think some of the earlier ones uh, you could be like the Babylonians I think that might have been one of the first ones and then like once you get to the uh, bronze era then you could switch to the Romans and so what's interesting about it is every different culture kind of has a different flair to it they play a little bit differently and so there's just all these um, millions of combinations that you can eventually kind of unlock as you play the game and so you might find yourself early on being like hey I'm gonna pick these guys because I want a lot of food but then all of a sudden you find yourself in a uh, combat with some of your neighbors and so then the next area you might be like hey I'm gonna be go become the Romans so I can be better at combat so it just offers a lot of variety here so um, what you basically have to do to get access to the Victor open dev is you have to pre-order the game and then once you pre-order it you have to connect it to your games together account and then they give you a link and so on and so forth they also uh, have different variations here where you can play with like your favorite Twitch streamers which I hadn't actually connected my games together here in the game and I'm not actually on the list here but you know I suppose I'll forgive them for it so we're gonna go ahead and hop in the game now the one I'd say the one issue here well two issues potentially with this particular scenario is they have the last two eras currently locked so you can't play anything in the last two eras which is understandable but then also too um Oh, it has just the same map every single time as well. So because of that, essentially, I know where everything is on the map just because I've already played it once or twice. Um, I played the first time on Metropolis and I really didn't have a hard time with the game at all. Let's bump it up to Empire and maybe get a little bit of a challenge. I don't really know how strong the AI is here. I will say even on my Metropolis player, whatever it was, uh, we did have someone else competing with us for score. Like they were pretty close, but I was basically just walking on top of the AI and I could have done a lot better if I wanted but I was very much kind of exploring the game and having a lot of fun with it and the funny thing is if you watch my Civ series when I was actually playing the game by myself I went completely different than anything I ever play in the Civ series like I actually went for a complete food build empire I even picked Khmer as one of my uh, uh, cultures in the second era or third era or something like that which is just absolutely hilarious and kind of psychotic actually I think it's Khmer that had the war elephants with a gun which are freaking amazing units by the way I was loving the crap out of them so We'll kind of explain the game here a little bit as we go into it. Some of it's very similar because, you know, if you played any civilization or something like that, it's very similar. Um, but then some of it's quite different. So to start off, we're just a nomadic tribe. We don't have like a, a settler or anything like that. Essentially, what we can do is we can claim territory. Now, to claim territory, we have to have a little bit of influence. And so uh, this game has a little bit of inspirations. I would definitely say from games like uh, Endless, like any of the endless space games or the endless series where essentially you just get so much customization when it comes to your empires which is kind of cool um, but then also it, it plays a lot like uh, age of wonders as well where essentially every single uh, uh, part of land is kind of broken down into these different sectors and so if you go ahead and claim a territory essentially you get access to that whole territory and no one else can kind of claim it and then your outposts eventually turn into cities and so on and so forth now currently we are a nomadic tribe for us to actually become a, um, to level up into era number one, we need to get these era stars. Um, what do we need? We have uh, three stars we need to get to get to the next era. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. Number one, by growing, have five population, 
and or units within your empire. So right now we only have one unit uh, and we don't have a city, so we don't have any population there. So if we get that up to five, then all of a sudden we can get one of the growth stars. Number two, knowledge star, discover curiosities, you cure 10 science. Um, and so then that gives you a star or a hunter star, had a total of three animals. Now, the thing is we don't have to get each one of those because eventually, you know, get the hunter star, we can get like uh, three kills. And then I think you can get more uh, stars from that by getting even more kills. So essentially the hunting is we can just come over here and just like hunt this animal and uh, go kill it and then we can get the um, XP from that. What we're going to start off with though is I'm going to walk up here and go pick up the, what is this? This is a discovery. It's kind of like a, it's a curiosity is what they call it. It's kind of like a goody hut in the other game. They usually give you something. This one actually gave us 10 food. So you'll see our army is actually growing or technically our tribe is actually growing. And if we find ourselves with 10 more food, then we'll actually have two units to rock around with we can move them around separately or we can take them together now down here is a uh, sage depot uh, so if we go ahead and have this inside of our uh, empire, this particular territory, we can go ahead and work the sage. It's very similar to like a luxury resource. Uh, actually, I think it's even called a luxury resource in this game. And so you can like trade it with your neighbors and so on and so forth. Um, but since hunting is one of the easiest ways to level up, I'm going to actually go ahead and level at, by hunting. Now, what's cool about hunting in this game or about any sort of war is it also plays very much like Age of Wonders, where essentially you get to kind of choose or you get to actually move your units around in the particular battle so instead of uh, necessarily taking place on the world map or something like that or just numbers running off screen you can kind of actually like control your units which is kind of cool so we'll go ahead and confirm the battle because we do want to fight this actually what's interesting is we're not as strong as I remember the other thing is you want to very much attack down in this game because if you attack down you tend to do more damage to the enemy than if you uh, attacked up up. I'm gonna go ahead and stay right here the uh, deer was stupid and ended up putting himself there he could have come back and I have at times seen him move away that would have been better for him but you'll see that if we attack down here we are estimated to lose 5 HP to a max of 25 HP. So there's definitely some randomness here and then they're gonna lose anywhere between 30 and 42 so they have a combat strength of eight, the deer here, and uh, we have a combat strength of 10 with another plus four because we're on the high ground. So we're going to go ahead and go beat up this deer a little bit. I mean, hey, it's for food, okay? So we ended up losing 25, which was like actually max, and then he lost 34. So that actually went kind of bad for us, to be honest. And then he attacked us and basically took one less damage than we did, which, once again, this is not going particularly strong, I have to be honest. Um... So we're at nine, he's at seven. We're both slightly more damaged because, or our combat strength is lower because we're slightly more damaged, but um, we should be able to win this. And that roll went a lot better for us. So there's definitely some randomness to it, which, you know, hey, I mean, it keeps it interesting. So ultimately we did end up killing the deer. I don't think there's any sort of experience on units though. As far as I can tell now, so uh, we got the victory. We ended up losing 73% of our health. And so our combat strength is now 20% lower. And then we ended up completely killing him. So that's fine because we will slowly heal here as we continue on. And also we got five more food. So we're actually really close to getting another unit, which is great for us. So um, right now we're just going to have to intern because there's nothing else happening right now. We should talk about everything else that's going on on the map. So this is basically our empire here. Uh, we can show the different cultures so these are all the first tier cultures we could potentially unlock so we got the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, uh, the Harpians, which is actually who I played a mine, which give you a bonus to food, and then you can build a canal district, and then their scouts are actually runners. Um, so these guys that we currently have right now eventually will upgrade to scouts when we get to the first era. So um, depending on if who we pick, they might be scouts, or you know if we picked uh, that same culture, the uh, Harpians, then they would technically be um, uh, uh, runners, which you know they weren't bad. I actually really kind of like the Harpians because I feel like food is pretty powerful in this game, but well, we probably are going to change it up a little bit. We got the Hittites, we got the Mycenaeans, we got the Nubians, we got the Olmecs. I don't know how to pronounce them, the Phoenicians, and then the Shao. So we could go like straight Eastern culture if we wanted as well. Although I would assume, actually, I don't know where these guys existed. I imagine this was... I imagine this was like India is kind of where I was thinking this was located too. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about that culture. So that's kind of interesting. So then here we got kind of just a quick look at our different growth, um, our different goals. Then these are all the different empires that we could be facing. Remember, they can completely switch to different. Uh, so just because we meet them now, they're going to their name's going to change and stuff like that. But their symbols will always be the same. Then over here right now, all we're generating is influence, although we're not generating any influence per turn. Uh, but we do have five influence, so we can actually create our first um, uh, outpost whenever we want and then this is worthless because we don't have anything going on there the other thing is let's go ahead and turn on the map so we can kind of get an idea of what everything is going to look like so now if we wanted to hypothetically throw down an outpost you can see putting the outpost in certain places is going to be better than others because it will bonus you know you'll get 13 food and eight production if we settled it there or you know if we want a little more production we could settle up there as well um, i'm not going to do either of those for now so let's go ahead and just in turn and we will advance so world deed unlocks so someone met uh, found the donkey desert so there are these things called world deeds um, there's competitive deeds I think these are world deeds yeah, yeah yeah so basically you just get a bunch of bonus score what this number is is basically the score uh, fame points is what they called in this game we're at zero and essentially as far as I can tell I might be wrong on this there doesn't seem to be any specific kind of victory types it seems like the only way you actually win the game is by having more fame than everyone else so you can achieve different fame by having more religion uh, than anyone, like your religion being a little more dominant, you know, the more culture you have, the more science and stuff like that. And then also completing these competitive grounds before anyone can also give you a nice little bonus as well. So that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, we can actually now we can't actually look at the future arrows yet either. OK, so let's go ahead and move upwards. There's a specific place up north that we're wanting to get to. So we have a total of four movement. It took two to move into the forest. It takes your whole turn. Um, to actually cross the river in this game. So you kind of got to keep that in mind. Also, we ended up finding a freshwater harvest, which gave us some more food. And so now we actually have two units here. Um, but the second unit spawns with the same amount of movement speed, so we can't move them anywhere special. But anyways, uh, it basically takes your entire move to actually cross the river. So you got to kind of keep that in mind here in the future. So can't really do anything else this turn, so we will go ahead and advance. And now new turn. We could split our units up. I think I'm going to keep them together in case we fight a battle. And I'm trying to remember where we are exactly. Because there is a natural wonder up here to the north that we want to go settle in. Um, and yeah, you might say it's kind of cheesy that we know where we're going. Also, by the way, this is copper. Which is, you know, a resource that you kind of need here to build some units early game. I think we want to keep going north. Honestly, I think it might have been this way, but I think we can probably still get there from here. Um, I assume that when the game actually comes out, there's going to be different... And then we'll cross here. Ah, oh, we actually missed this discovery right here. And that's okay. I assume that the map's actually going to play out differently here in the future, but, you know, for now, this is okay. I actually kind of want to settle in the same spot we did before. Ah, here we go. Uh, Mount Rainma. So this is what we were looking for. So this is an excellent wonder to kind of spawn next to. Oh, we're actually, I know exactly where we are now. Interesting. Okay, so we're a little too further east from where I wanted to be. Okay, so we'll actually have to come back a little bit, but we can come around this way. That's fine. Oh, and actually, we should probably pick up that discovery as well. So Mount Arena, because we actually met it, we got 50 points from discovering it. I thought we also gain culture per turn or influence per turn. I keep calling it culture. I know if we have it inside our territory, we actually get the boost as well. But that's not what I'm looking for. I thought we actually gained some per turn. We'll have to see if this updates. Just from seeing it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. So we actually have three units right now, which is kind of nice. Um, and then there's some horses here. So essentially, I want to kind of settle like right down here. Um, just because it was kind of a really nice spot. Um, food wise and stuff like that. So we're just going to kind of move you back down here and come over here. And yeah, then we'll have to cross this river. And I think our settlement's going to be like right there. So right now we're at three of five on our first growth star, which is going to be okay. Um... I think we actually settled our, our, our encampment right here because it was kind of cool because it was kind of like these mountains surrounding it. And then there was just this nice little area right there, which I kind of dig. So we'll go uh, grab this. That actually almost gives us four pop, which is kind of hilarious. And so then they're actually telling me to put it over here. 
Huh. Now, what's interesting about this... So, if I ended up going here, can I actually see the cliff? I think I settled it right here. So, this is 11 to 15. This one's 13 8. I feel like that's a lot more pips than this one. So, I'm wondering why it's recommending here versus there. Huh. Interesting. Um, I'm actually going to unclick this. And I want to move right here because I wanted to see what this was. Maybe it was this tile I ended up settling on. Or it might have been this one. Because, like, the cliffs you can see, you kind of have some issues, like, walking on top of it. So, like, there's no easy way to get up here. So, it seemed like a very defensive spot, which is why I kind of liked it. Yeah, they're actually recommending here because it's 12 of 17. And you know what? I'm all for it. So, we're going to go settle our first outpost here. If you don't settle by the time you get to the next era, then they give you an option to go ahead and throw it on your first outpost then. Um, but we're just going to go throw it down right away. Uh, I doesn't use up any of our population here just fyi um also the other thing to keep in mind is okay so it did finish it right away at any point while you still have an outpost you can actually relocate it which is kind of cool it takes a couple turns so if you end up like grabbing a settlement really quickly you can always move it here in the future um so we're not gaining any additional culture right now but that is okay um i'm gonna go ahead and split off one of our guys and I'm going to let you go after this. And then I'm going to have you guys come around to go up here. So we currently have one of three hunter stars when we're at three of five of that star okay interesting a world of flame in the distance a thin cord also these kind of events pop up every once in a while as well so thin cord of smoke cuts them into the air of the clear blue skies fire calling a few tribesmen you run closer to the smell of the cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each foot fall you spy dancing flames and suddenly find yourself at the edge of the settlement on fire many of the structures are ablaze but even with the smoke and flames you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship you're about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil when you see short shadowy figures running away use they could be part of your tribe if you give them a chase now but that would mean losing the secrets of construction what's your choice show I can basically get a tech research cost next to uh, subtract 25 costs on it, 25% um, cost, or I can get a new army. I think I'm going to take the new army, because remember, we're trying to get to 4 or 5. And so where did that actually spawn it? Okay, it spawned you here. So yeah, go ahead and join these guys. There are some mammoths around to hunt, and those guys can be pretty beefy, so we got to be a little careful here. So we're at 4 or 5 population. This settlement, even though it is an outpost, will technically grow. Now, the only kind of complaint I have in the game is I feel like the graphics tend to not be, like, th like I feel like they're just flat. Like, they're not actually 3D. Like, these units, yes, definitely. But I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye out as the city starts growing because, like, I don't know. It tends to feel a little flat. Like, the buildings and stuff aren't, you know, fully... Um, like, yeah, they're just flat, I guess, for lack of a better term, if it makes sense. You know, like they're painted on versus, like, actually being kind of um, like a 3D model on top of it. So you'll see that this is kind of the uh, territory that we have right now. So it's kind of a strange, interesting territory, which, you know, I'm all for. Um, we should be growing our another tribe size here pretty quickly as well. Um, and then you're also gaining berries as well. Now, if I ended up merging these back with these, since you have five food and these have 15 food, yes, it would immediately spawn another unit. So I was wondering that at one point as well. Um, we also just met someone else. This is our first person. And there is a freaking dude over there. So... Culture chosen. So an unknown uh, reached the ancient era with the Olmax. So someone actually got into the next era right away. A little bit before us, which, you know, that's fine. Oh, speaking of which, there's a mammoth. He's currently exhausted. I could go attack him right now. I think we do need to attack him because we need, we need to get these stars going, man. We need to get these stars. So I will go ahead and confirm the battle. We can instantly fight it. But for now, I'm enjoying fighting these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put you... Hmm. There's not going to be an easy way to do this. Unless I can walk you around. I mean, really, someone's going to end up fighting you at the ground level. We could also go on the defensive right now and wait for him to attack us. But the AI doesn't always attack you, which is kind of smart. So how combat works is there's basically three rounds. 
and you can do one of two things um these you have to actually eliminate enemies sometimes when you're fighting other civs there will actually be um uh flags on the ground so you can either kill all the units or capture the flag but the point is at the end of three rounds combat basically ends so we don't necessarily want to wait till the end of three rounds we want to kill him before the end of that because like that's our goal right now is to get the kill so i think we're just gonna go ahead and go for it here and we're gonna start with our dude that's attacking from down below did 37 damage that's not bad oh there's a river crossing here oh no uh we're actually doing more damage here than i figured I kind of actually expected he was going to do more damage to me there. So, my assumption is he's going to go ahead and attack this guy, which... So, we actually did a lot more damage to him. Interesting. These guys were kicking my butt before. I wonder if they ended up coming in and nerfing the Mammoths a little bit? So, these guys are still at full HP. I could have probably used them. Probably would have been a smarter way to, thing to do, but that's okay. So, Gross Star has been earned because we got enough food here. And we have two or three combats, so yay. So we currently have a maxed out army here, which means you're technically not growing. So I think what I want to go ahead and do is probably split these guys up, because we did see the other mammoth there. And... Oh, we can actually go into the first era. Okay, so you only needed one of the three stars. All right, well, there you go. So now we can pick any culture we want. Now, uh, the Olmax did end up picking... Um, well, the dudes that we had seen ended up picking the Olmax. It's kind of weird because it's like, what do I call them? The yellow guys that were directly to our south ended up picking the Olmax. Okay, congratulations. And then someone else ended up picking the Harpins. So, apparently, I'm not going to be playing with the same culture I played last time. So, let's take a quick look at these cultures then. So, we got the Assyrians. So every culture has basically three different uh, uh, options for it that makes it unique. So they have a, and I don't know what they call them. Um, see if they actually tell me what they're called. Yeah, I don't remember what these are all called. But anyways, they have an ability, they have a building, and they have a unit. So the ability here is Siege Master. So you get plus one land movement, land movement speed on units. This is the Assyrians, by the way. Uh, that was not what I wanted to do. Uh, then their unique... Uh, district or their neat building is let's see so this is a replacement I think for the outpost which is basically kind of like a fort you kind of build out in the middle of nowhere so 10 district fortification negative 10 stability we'll talk about that here in a little bit plus one combat strength in combat for units adjacent to the district is a land unit spawn is fortified okay and then their unique unit is the Syrian Raiders so to actually get this unit we would actually need to have access to horses you'll see at the bottom the red horse head and then we also need a specific tech to get it so we couldn't use it right now so it has a movement of six and 21 combat strength which just for the record we were at what 10 combat strength and four movement right now um with these guys so significantly better also i just love the ui at ui in this game it's very pretty so eh, i'm kind of hit or miss on the assyrians uh babylonians gives you science per research technology and capital Plus two science per research technologies on capital. So does that mean every time... Oh yeah, okay, and so this first trait gets retained throughout your errors regardless of how your empire evolves. So we would always have plus one movement here if we were Assyrians. Or here we're always going to have philosophers. Um, the buildings also stay... Uh, in between eras as well, although you can't build older um, buildings when you progress to the next era if you switch your culture. And then I think the units you can still potentially build, but don't quote me on that. I thought I was able to do that. So what this sounds like is every time I research a tech, I get an additional two science in our capital, which is interesting. Uh, Astronomy House gives us plus one food per researcher, plus one science per researcher, um, and then food and science for adjacent farmers. Okay. And then 22 damage, and this is just a replacement for the swordsman? No, I think it's the, it, it looks, it's a spearman, okay. So it's Anakav. So Anakav do bonus combat strength against mounted enemies, but there isn't, uh, it doesn't seem like melee does bonus damage against uh, uh, Anakav. So they seem to be pretty okay in normal fights. 
Interesting. So Egyptians then plus one industry on district producing industry modifying. Okay. And then we can build the pyramids, which gives us one influence, three industry, uh, three industry per maker quarters and workers. Okay. And then this is a chariot. Yeah. Ooh, a range chariot. Interesting. Okay. Hittites plus one combat strength. That's nice. So that's just permanent. Uh, automatic upgrades, regular outposts can be used as land spawn, okay. And then they got a chariot as well. The Mycenaeans give you modify unit industry costs. So units are a little cheaper and experience on creating unit in the city. So apparently there is experience on units, interesting. Then combat strength in combat for units. Another freaking, man, what is with everyone uh, having um, outposts production? And then you are just a regular melee unit. Okay, Nubians. Money on luxury resource. Money on strategic resource. Ooh. Industry money. Money per marker quarters and then archers. Cool. Phoenicians I don't think are going to help us. Because we're not really on the coast. So we're probably going to avoid them. The Shao. Uh, stability on district. Interesting. So you can build more districts then, essentially. And then the Confucian school gives us science per adjacent mountain. One science, one research slot, and then they can build... Looks like a chariot as well. Yeah, heavy cav. You need bronze and horses for that one. Ooh, I kind of dig that one, except the only problem is we don't have a lot of mountains here. We have one mountain there, we have one mountain there, and this doesn't count as a mountain. With sheer cliffs first discovered... Base movement. I mean, it says Mount Rama, but I don't think it actually counts as mountains. So we don't really have that many mountains. So I think I'm just going to go Babylonians. Get the extra bonus science. And hopefully we can keep up with everyone else. Also, I kind of dig the extra food as well. I do feel like food and having giant cities is really, really valuable in this game. So the more growth, the better we're at. So we are now currently... In the first era? Maybe it takes a turn? Wait, what? Oh, it, it occurs between turns. Okay. I was like, wait a second. We should be in the next era. Uh, so confused. All right. Let's go move you over here because we want to go grab these curiosities before someone else does. And then we will go split you up here next turn as well. Okay. Congratulations. And we get a cutscene. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Try Those deer are pretty terrifying. Towns. towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Da dump. Okay, so we now went from the Neolithic to the ancient area, and we are a nomad tribe, and now we're the Babylonians. Woot, woot, woot. So we met our first empire, so we met the Harpians. These guys stole our thing. Now, what's interesting about this is initially, and actually, we'll go ahead and cue it the diplomacy color, here. So, the leader of a great people to greet you in their name. So, you actually get voice acting here every time you like trade or anything like that. So, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. Uh, I thought you usually talk to me and do that, but whatever. So what's interesting is you have different treaties to begin with. So right now we tolerate skirmishes. So what that means is if we run up on these guys, we would potentially like they might fight us. We might fight them, which, you know, it's basically I think it probably pisses them off if you kill their units. But, you know, I don't know. We'll end up seeing. Um, and then the other thing is. We can open up trade routes. Uh, right now, we reveal our capital by default. We have closed borders by default now. The thing with the closed borders is you'll see they're moving through my territory. Right now, technically, I don't think this is a city yet. Yeah, I actually have to turn it into a city. Oh, and there I go. So now he shouldn't actually be able to move through our territory because um, this went... Um, well, when it's an outpost, you can move through outpost territories. You can't move through uh, city territories yet. Also, keep in mind, and here, just going to throw out a bunch of information here because this is about to get really complex but you'll notice up here we have one and two so right now we can only actually administer two cities uh, I think if you have more than two cities you can do it but you actually get some penalties is what it appears so we'll actually want to go ahead and throw down another city which actually begs the question how much influence is 10 okay so it's not that bad so we'll probably send a dude out here to go ahead and settle this territory so we can get Mount Rama in it um, the other options we could settle like right down here because we know he's over here um, did someone grab my boost? There was a boost there, was there not? You little punk. Yeah, he's going to steal my freaking boost, man. Although, he can't move through this territory. So, yeah, not sure on that. 
Other thing is you'll notice we're actually making influence per turn. We're also making gold per turn. We have no access to horses or copper yet. Uh, we have seen them. Where was the copper? Yeah, the copper's right there, so we can go ahead and build on the copper, but we can't do it quite yet. Uh, and then, let's see, gameplay oriented can set cities into science mode, so all our industry and money then are converted into science and last for five turns. So this is a button we can click. We can't do it right away, though, um, but then we can actually have you produce only signs there for a little bit. Speaking of which, we now have unlocked technology, and so we have our tech out technology tree here. Um, we can't go to I think the game actually ends on let's see I'm trying to see what I remember here uh, I did get three masted ships yeah so I think it ends at this era right here so you can't get any of the tech here and here yeah the last two techs are so or last two eras are supposed to be locked now what's weird is it's like early modern and then industrial because I feel like industrial should be before early modern right like, shouldn't early modern be renaissance? Whatever, whatever. So anyways, uh, we have options for text right now. We can do calendar, which allows us to build the artisan quarters um, for money. We can also build the granary to get some extra food in our capital. Domestications for us to get horses, and we can also build scout riders. Uh, and then we can do some animal barns. This is actually an upgrade to our scouts right now. We can clear forests here with carpentry, get the lumber yard and archers. This one's not so great because we don't have a lot of forests in our opening territory. Or we could go for city defense and warriors. I think I'm going to pop out... Um, uh, just for the granary here at calendar which 12 turns is going to take a little bit of time so that's our tech tree right now there's no religion unlocked yet and we also don't have any of the civics unlocked which is essentially kind of like the culture in this game we can also go ahead and pick this and then this right here shows and hides um the outputs so right now we have a population of zero of eight on our city but we are growing in two turns here um as we get population we can actually put them at different jobs we can either send them to go work on food industry money or science uh so this kind of works a little bit like age of wonders here right now though we only have building slots for two food um two food or two population to work food only two for industry only two for money and only two for science as we build different districts and stuff like that we can unlock more slots uh so that's how you kind of do that now stability here is at 100 percent every time you build a district essentially it lowers the stability essentially you could kind of think of stability as like almost maybe like empire sprawl from stellaris or something like that where the less stability you have the more likely you are to spawn um well if it gets too low you'll spawn rebels and stuff like that um you're still pretty much okay as long as you're above what like 20 percent, i think it is or 30 percent, something along those lines but essentially the larger your city gets chances are the lower the stability is going to get because every time you build a district which is what you need to do to put your people to work the uh every district's going to end up lowering stability but so what's cool is there's going to eventually be different buildings you can build um, that are going to be in the same. They're infrastructure buildings like the granary. Um, they don't count as districts. But anyways, you build those and a lot of different buildings can actually then bump up your uh, stability. Also, if you build any in-game wonders, those also usually give you stability as well. So what we can do in our capital right now is we can't build a scout because it actually requires a population and we don't have a population yet. It's kind of funny that we have like a city, but no one's living there. We can do public ceremony for some bonus food or we can just go ahead and build a district. We're going to start by building a district. Uh, I'm going to immediately go with food because this is probably like the biggest need we have right now. Um, and yeah, we can go ahead and throw a farm here. This is going to give us plus five food. It is going to get rid of the uh, production, though, from it. So we are going to lose one uh, industry on that tile. But in the scheme of things, it's okay. And then when it completes, we are going to actually end up losing 10 stability. But right now, not that big of a deal. Okay, that's a lot happening. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take you... Uh, da, 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 da. So uh, it's a little annoying, but I'm going to take you and I want to move you over in this direction. Let's please because i want to grab here and theoretically he should not be able to grab that because it's in my territory theoretically now with you guys i'm going to go ahead and send you over here and we're just going to go ahead and plan on building um another city over here so i can get access to the horses early on now you're probably okay here do we want to go 
So you have four movements. So let's go put you here, and then I'm going to go attack the deer. We might as well attack the deer, because I think it is it is worth food. So sure, it's better than not, I guess. Um, we'll go ahead and end deployment right where we're at. And yeah, we're doing crazy damage, because we're on the hill. So theoretically, actually, I don't know if he can move around, can he? No, he can't because there's zone of control so he wasn't able to get all the way over here but next turn he could theoretically get over there and then attack me even level but there won't be a next turn because i'm just gonna go murder him okay cool awesome we can also automate the battle which eh, that's fine we actually also gained five gold yeah interesting did we gain food on that oh they don't grow the same way now so we're just getting gold for the battles instead of food okay also there's a lot of information going on so if you know you're confused you can drop a comment and i'll try answering it although i'm definitely not a master at the game they did have an earlier open dev i forgot the name of it before this game um but i didn't get a chance to play this so this has actually been the first time i played the game all right so you have an elephant here I actually did not want to click there. God dang it. Yeah, that was that was a mistake. I was trying to not do that. I was just like trying to hover over it because I was basically trying to see where I could attack if I could attack him from up there. And then apparently I accidentally let go of the controller. Um, That did not give me the thing. So apparently he ended up taking the, the, the crap from me. So let's just go ahead and engage him. I'll move this way. We're just trying to find the curiosities in front of him. Um, and then I think you're already done. No, you have four movement. Do we want to go this way? I mean, I know we still have a curiosity over there. Yeah, we'll, we'll move this way. We can also destroy these sanctuaries. Um, they'll keep spawning out animals until you destroy them. At some point, we'll probably want to ransack them. I'm trying to think. I don't remember what they give you to ransack them. So he is trading right now for uh, luxury resources, which means we can actually then trade uh, for luxury resources, but uh, neither of us have the resources, so there you go. That's basically kind of like the initial, hey, let's be friends um, that the game uh, offers. I'm going to come here in hopes that he actually comes and attacks me because I, I do want to fight him because I would like to get the money or the boost or whatever we can get from it. That is, oh, oh, a deer, okay. Might just want to raid these. All right, so Babylon did gain population. Nice. And this is actually a downward attack. The thing that sucks about this, we can only attack with one unit at a time. I'm going to confirm battle, and we're going to play a little risky, and we're going to hope that he actually attacks us. So we're going to end round one, and he did actually come through and attack me. Okay, that's what we were hoping for. I was hoping he didn't just stay there, because there was a chance that he would just stay there, and then I'm just kind of like, ah, screwed, because the odds of killing him in three rounds were going to be kind of hard. But he should have no problem, or we should have no problem killing him now, and there you go. Boom. And so then what, we get gold for this? Yeah, 20 gold. Okay, not bad, not bad. And combat, if your unit fights in combat, it just immediately ends this turn, so there you go. So I think I'm actually gonna send you back this way because we did see there was another curiosity this way. I'm not too worried about my city right this second um, just because we only met one neighbor and we're actually friendly with him as well. Uh, what are you alerting me here? Population gain. Yeah, okay, so yeah, uh, and we should look at it. So now that we have one population, I can actually move him to any of these different slots here, and you'll notice that, um, oh, I see, so it's six and now it's nine. Oh, so it changes as soon as you hover over it. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So we'll stick with food right now, even though it's a little on the slower side. Um, do we finish our district? No, we're about to finish in two turns. Oh, here's the other thing. You can actually buy out districts, which is like, oh, I love it. So, you know, we can't afford it this turn, but the value of the gold buyouts can be a little cheaper next turn, which is gonna be nice. Um, scientist affinity. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, I just put a scientist over here. Now, keep in mind, this does give us more food as well. So this is in seven turns. This is in five turns. Because aren't these guys supposed to give us food too? Hold up. 
Oh, that's only once we get the astronomy house. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So that's only the science house. So then in that case, that doesn't actually change anything. So uh, let's go stick to food. And we want to actually grow you a little bit. Like, here's the thing. Since we have like two slots here, two slots there, two slots there, two slots there. I mean, we have spots for eight populations. So we want to like max out that population as soon as we can. So um, unit needs to move. I'll go ahead and like rip up the sanctuary. Um, I don't remember what it does, but I think, it, uh, okay, it's going to give us 10 gold um, over this next turn, which, yeah, I think I'm fine with. There's actually more copper right there. Hmm. Might want to go grab that copper sooner rather than later, but we'll see. I only have spots for two cities, but we can put down more than um, two outposts. So a bunch of people are choosing different. Um... Are you coming at me, bro? I think he's coming at me, bro. We are actually equal combat strength right now. So he's a scout, does 13 damage. Oh, these guys are also hurt too. Oh yeah. So there's no way, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go here. So if he attacks us, I should be able to defend on the hill. Yeah, I think that's gonna be our best option. I could also go ahead and put an outpost here. But I would rather have the outpost, I think, on that side because of the copper. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead and throw an outpost over here, please. And I don't remember the best spot over here. So that one's 14-5, 14-6. So we'll want to go um, do it there. So next turn, he'll be able to go throw down an outpost over there. You are going where? I think we're supposed to go you over here, I think, was the plan. Um... Okay, yeah, I can't actually work the bronze yet. Just double checking on that. These episodes are going to be a little longer, by the way. The game is a little on the silver side. So, okay, he actually... Is he attacking me from up there? He might be. Yeah, he might be trying to attack me from the hill, which would be kind of cheeky. Um, but we're not going to let him do that because we're going to go run this way. Because screw you, buddy. I'm going home. All right, so we should have enough... So uh, let's just go ahead and get this outpost going. And we'll turn this outpost to a city as soon as it's done. Um, you'll see that ends up putting all these different tiles here. Um, it's going to take three turns. That's fine. Uh, I've seen this map, so these are basically just dead ends over here, but that's okay. Uh, I kind of hate how you can't grow anymore once you hit the next era, which actually probably says something about maybe holding on to the ancient era as long as possible. Just so you can, like, uh, grow your army from food which is kind of interesting so we did go ahead and finish the farmers output here now or the farmers quarter was it the farmers quarter so now instead of eight population we can actually uh, hold nine and there's now three slots there i think it's also giving us bonus food yeah we're actually working it too so it looks like i suppose every district you actually end up working is i guess my assumption here yeah i will go ahead and build that's going to give us nine food and nine science, dude. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and build the astronomy house right away as well, just so we can get our tech going, number one. But then, uh, number two, that also helps with our growth as well. So, I like it. You can only build one of these per uh, city. So, we'll keep that for now. Uh, how much is it to uh, buy? 205. Okay, so our money is not in a great spot yet. But let's do one more turn and then we'll probably wrap this first episode up. We're going to, um, I'm going to try getting to the end of the game before, um, you have access to this or I have access to this till May 3rd. I mean, if you get it, you have access as well to May 3rd. So basically my goal is to kind of finish it before May 3rd. Um, this is a very interesting area. You can see yellow is actually right over there. It's a little different. I think yellow had all this the last time I played. So I definitely want to lock this down so he doesn't have access to it. The question is where? None of these are particularly strong food-wise. So these are going to be really slow-growing cities, which kind of sucks. But at least we'll have a lot of production, which I suppose will make up for the lack of food. Yeah, I think we're going to go here then. There might be a better tile. Actually, you know what? Let's move up here because we might, as we get vision, might be able to spot something slightly better. Um, I am going to go ahead and take one of you and let's go move you here. Because I figured there was nothing over here. And then we'll kind of move you back around. And then... Um, 
We'll send you back this way, because I do want to go ahead and lock this territory in as well. So, because this one has salt. I think we put a city, like, down in here somewhere last time. So anyways, these guys are basically just scouts to kind of explore the entire world for us. Um, I'll put you on the hill. Should get you a little bit better vision. And we should probably go ahead and use you down here somewhere. Just to lock this territory out as well. Yeah, anywhere down there is probably great. Okay, well, we're going to wrap this first episode up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe Greetings button during the game. Comment and share your support. Let's see if he wants to do a non-aggression pack. Hail, friend. So he wants to do that for 60 gold. I'm sorry, I'm not going to spend all of my gold on that. In fact, I don't mind being aggressive and kicking your butt, but we'll figure that out next episode. Till then, bye everybody!